All right. So just to kind of get you guys started, our history of, of CWD, Missouri was one of the first states to kind of put together this, this concept that we needed a contingency plan, a plan um, that at least state state fish and wildlife agencies, Department of Ag, and in, and in this case, our Department of Health and Senior Services need to come together and recognize that if and when CWD was found in the state, we need to work cooperatively together. Uh, and so we signed that contingency plan in 2003, but it was tremendously vague. It basically said if something's found in a captive facility, Department of Ag would take the lead. They'd take the lead primarily because indemnification was coming in through um, USDA. Uh, if it was found in the free-ranging herd, Department of Conservation would take the lead. But it really didn't say what we would actually do. And so in 2008, when I arrived with the department, um, you know, eager young biologist, ready to tackle the world, um, you know, grab the bull by the horns, said, sure, I'll develop us a draft CWD management plan and, and see where it goes from there. And so that was probably my first mistake, um, <laughs> being a little bit overly eager. Uh, uh, but but that's kind of the background and how sort of my role is as a uh, deer biologist and now wildlife division chief has evolved. Um, but, but it really relates back to the fact that we really didn't have a great deal of, of detail to our plan. And so in, in 2001, as this thing slowly starting to, to pop up and concern um, began to be raised about the distribution of the disease, the department started testing sick deer. And then in 2002 to 2004, we would put forth a pretty extensive effort to try to determine if the disease was present in the state, um, or if it was at least determined it was at relatively low prevalence. So at that time, we set a goal of 200 deer per county over that three year period and ended up testing 22,000 deer, which basically told us there was a low probability that CWD was in the state. If it was in the state, it was at relatively low prevalence. So then we took a brief pause for a couple of years to reassess where we were gonna go. And then in 2007, we began um, ramping up our sampling efforts and, and using taxidermists, those, those individuals that are collecting you know, adult bucks. Uh, so kind of one of the first states to recognize that that was a good source of sort of a weighted sample, but a way for us to get to get good samples. And so through 2011, we test about another 16,000 deer. And then the thing that, you know, you, you hate to happen and events in your life happen that you'll you'll never forget. And that day in February, I was at home battling the flu and I woke up, you know, in a cold sweat, had just got over the the fever had just broke i roll over and look and look at my cell phone i know i've got a missed call from from lonnie hansen our deer biologist at the time thought, huh he knows i'm homesick he's he's not calling for a good reason and i listen to the voicemail i says well we're in vicky's office our supervisor uh we think we have a cwd positive deer in in north missouri and so that kind of set off a, a chain of events we found out this was an adult male uh, from a high fence hunting preserve in, in Lynn County, right in the heart of some of our best deer hunting country. And so we went to work with the Department of Ag really closely and with USDA, uh, worked on depopulation of that facility. We actually didn't complete depopulation until the winter of 2011. So um, acceptance of indemnification was initially denied. But we ultimately removed about 150 animals from that facility with no additional positives. So the questions of where did the disease come from and how did it get here really began to, to, to crop up. But along the way, this also set the stage for us to really begin to start to talk a lot about um, the disease and talk with the public about the disease. What do we know? Where are we going? And, and how are we going to deal with it? And you guys have seen these maps repeatedly today, but this is, a, this is the distribution of CWD as we knew of it in September of 2010. So that red dot there, Missouri, uh, right in the center of the screen, represented kind of a kind of an outlier. We were in the middle of the Midwest, and and certainly concerned about how it might contribute to the further spread of the disease. So, so we were gonna uh, be pretty aggressive. And then October of 2011, a captive facility in Macon County, about 15 miles as the crow flies from that Lynn County facility, owned and operated by the same individuals. Um, had two captive deer test positive animals that they were basically required to test after that initial facility was was positive. And so you can see here, this is the southeastern Lynn County. That was the original positive captive facility. And then this second one popped up there. So we instituted some fall surveillance in January 2012. Dr. Fisher calls, 
says, got bad news for you, you know, delivering, never delivering good news. Um, but anyway, we had had two free ranging deer test positive within, you know, a mile of, of that captive facility. And so that led to more public meetings and then the development of a, of a real short term um, surveillance strategy. And so our approach here and our approach when we found any new positives is to draw a five mile circle around uh, that known positive location and do a bunch of additional intensive sampling. In this case, we collected more than 650 deer within a five mile radius of this captive facility. And this was almost all, all department staff as well as landowners. Landowners collected about um, half uh, of the, the deer that we collected during this um, February and March operation. As a result of that, we identified three additional CWD positive deer and all of those again within two miles of that captive facility. So you can see there in gray is the captive facility. It's about a 3,000 acre um, hunting preserve. And then the blue boxes represent sections in which CWD positive free ranging deer have been found. And so summer of 2012, we set out to, to write a surveillance plan um, to at least provide some guidance of, of where we were gonna go. And it's, it's very much like uh, many other state surveillance plans. And the, de the devil gets down into the details of how do you actually go about implementing it. But pretty clear that we wanted to continue our statewide surveillance to be vigilant of trying to detect the disease as early as possible where it was not found, um, determine the prevalence and monitor the distribution in the affected areas, and then provide accurate information um, to the public and our staff and other stakeholders so that we could make some informed decisions, but more importantly, apply management actions to try to limit the further spread of the disease. Given that our history of testing, the proximity to that captive facility, the likelihood that we detected the disease relatively early, uh, we felt that there was at least an opportunity there to, to have some long-term impact on the disease. So we flew to Illinois, um, talked to the to Paul Shelton and the folks at Illinois who'd been having some successes focusing on really intensive um, sharpshooting, targeted culling in, in known CWD areas, you know, trying to remove a high proportion of those animals that are most likely coming into contact with other infected animals. And our focus here is really trying to remove those female social groups, those, those individuals that are most closely related most likely to have interacted with one another. And, and Doug will talk to you guys a lot more about their specific program, but, but really that's what we modeled ours after. We basically put a one square mile buffer around any positive section and go in and try to remove as many deer as possible. So we started charging down the road 2012, 2013 sampling season. So that's the fall of 2012 and the spring of 2013. About six, 1,700 deer um, sampled in our CWD management zone, six counties in North Missouri, five additional positives, another 3,200 deer statewide, and still nothing else going on there. So very intensive effort, thousands and thousands of staff hours, lots of interaction with the public trying to reduce deer numbers there, trying to eliminate positive deer from the landscape. In 2013, 2014, we found no additional positives which is sort of a blessing and a curse in that we know um, the likelihood that there were no positives still on the landscape was really, really low. Um, but we put in a lot of time and effort and energy and we were hoping um, that we would be the next New York, you know, could we have effectively eliminated the disease from the landscape? And so actually 2013, 2014, after that was a little bit challenging trying to message um, where do we go and that we need to sustain this effort. It's, it's too early to, to wave the flag of success. And so then 2014 with CWD reality always comes back home. We found nine CWD positive deer in Macon County, three of those during our fall surveillance period and then six during our winter operation. So those after the end of the season. And then 2014 for the first time, uh, we found CWD outside of that kind of original core area in Adair County, about 25 miles as the crow flies. So this is North Missouri, very wide open agricultural type landscape. Dispersal distances are pretty high. Um, so it's it's reasonable um, that this could, could have been a, a, a spark from that Macon County positive, but we don't know for certain. Ultimately found six, six CWD positive animals there. So, so that started to really um, result in a pretty significant ramping up of of our surveillance efforts, but it also started to raise concern amongst the public and particularly those landowners in Adair County that 
Maybe CWD exists in other places, and you're asking us to remove additional deer. You're asking us to, to negatively impact the population, negatively impact our hunting success and our future opportunities for hunting opportunities. And so they began to kind of push back in terms of, you guys need to be doing more sampling. We need to be doing more sampling during the hunting season. And so we started thinking about what are our opportunities to expand those? Um, what other ways could we get get additional samples to build understanding or at least trust uh, in the data that we had. And then in early 2015, we found a CWD positive deer in, in uh, central Missouri, not far from, from Jeff City. It's an adult male that was collected by a taxidermist um, as part of our statewide surveillance. And it seems everybody kind of has the poster child. This was a deer that made Boone and Crockett. So, you know, the, the classic case of a very, very healthy adult male um, shot a very, very small landowner shot in his backyard, uh, but really raised the question of, okay, where's the disease and, and how did it get here? We did a bunch of additional sampling um, in the fall and still have yet to, to find an additional positive. But it led to more public meetings, more outreach, um, communicating to the public again about a disease that for, for most of them is not in their backyard, so they're not paying attention. And, and unfortunately, every time you find CWD somewhere, it's, it's like urban deer management too. It's, it's going back to CWD 101. And, and in many ways, you feel like you're repeating yourself for about the four or 500th time. Um, but until it's in somebody's backyard, they really, really don't pay attention. And as you guys have heard numerous times, it's, um, it's a communication challenge for sure. And then as a result of the finding of that Cole County positive, we created a much bigger CWD management zone, which meant we, we added a bunch of taxidermists. And so in the fall of 2015, there was a deer head sitting in a, in a taxidermist shop in Osage County, which was now part of our central Missouri um, surveillance zone got submitted, it was harvested from the previous year and turned out to be from Franklin County, southwest of St. Louis. So now we've got these really scattered um, CWD positive animals, really, really raising questions as to what's going on and, and certainly questions about our, our testing methodology and, and the way we were doing it. And so in November of last year, we actually, for the first time, required hunters that harvest deer within the CWD management zone uh, to bring their heads to a designated sampling station. We had 75 sampling stations across 29 counties and engaged more than 1,000 of our staff. We collected more than 19,000 samples, so uh, probably arguably the most intensive two-day CWD sampling effort that, that anybody is engaged in. And the reason we did this again was to better understand the distribution of the disease in our management zones with, with the intensive sampling that we were doing, the targeted culling efforts in North Missouri, the concern that the disease was in other spots. And then also the reality that if we were gonna have any um, opportunity to be successful in stamping out sparks uh, or CWD in new areas, it was critical that we identified them quickly. And the only way we've been able to, to actually ramp up sampling was through this mandatory requirement of people to bring us deer. We, we, we've done the voluntary sample stations. Folks just aren't willing to go out of their way to, to drive a deer to get to get it collected. We did have the history of having uh, sampling, uh, mandatory checking. Uh, that went out in 2005, and so there was at least some nostalgia associated with our mandatory sampling sites. So folks responded relatively well, but but I think it was really, really important in terms of our ability to, to collect samples and, and really a unique opportunity to engage a group of landowners uh, or hunters in, in a much broader and consistent way and reveal to them the significance of this issue that, that if we were willing to dedicate a thousand MDC staff, um, certainly the department is concerned about the issue and it offered a, an opportunity to educate a bunch of folks that, that weren't quite as well um, versed in the disease. And so here, this basically shows the distribution of, of what our sampling history is. As I mentioned earlier, that early 2000s period um, dropped off in 05 and 06 and then slowly picked back up. But then 2016, we collected more than 25,000 samples um, statewide.
with most of those occurring within the, that 29 counties. So if we look at the distribution of the disease in Missouri, this is what it looks like today. Uh, we've had 42 positives. We've tested more than 76,000 deer since 2001. With most of those occurring in North Missouri with that Macon County um, core area or Adair County core area, we have one here in Lynn County that I'll talk about uh, in, in a moment. But our biggest challenge now really is dealing with these outliers at this point trying to figure out what the introduction of those disease in those various locations are. And it's certainly complicated um, our management efforts and, and the discussion of stretching staff thin um, of when does it become too much to, to manage is, is certainly a part of the conversation. And so our general approach is established management zones. We draw a 25 mile radius around a CWD positive. If a county intersects it, it's in a CWD management zone. Our goal there really is to determine prevalence and monitor distribution of the disease. Doing that again through hunter harvest, uh, sick and row kill deer, and then our postseason culling operations or sampling efforts around identified positives. And again, I can't reiterate that this mandatory sampling effort, I think, is really the, the key to us being able to, to be very um, on the edge of the time of introduction to the time of detection. That's the total key of being able to, to manage or at least have some opportunity to eliminate this disease. The other thing that's happened with the identification of those positives in St. Clair County and then now with the, the growing infection in Arkansas is it's resulted in us having to add a bunch of additional counties to our CWD management zone to the point where we now have 41 counties. We have 114 counties. 41 of them are now in a CWD management zone. And so to implement mandatory sampling, we don't have enough staff. We have a lot of staff, but we don't have enough to do it on that scale. And so we made a, um, a strategic decision to pull back um, in some of our established CWD management zones for this fall. So we're going to do mandatory sampling on opening weekend in 25 counties. That's the ones in, in gray. So here in central Missouri where we have that one, in north Missouri where we have the outbreak, in uh, east central Missouri, you know, south of St. Louis uh, where we have that, and then trying to figure out what the distribution is in west central and then certainly um, very concerned that we'll detect the disease along the Arkansas border. Arkansas has found it now within five and a half miles. They recently reported a roadkill um, just south of Branson, about five and a half miles from Missouri. And so again, this all hinges on, based on where we know we are in the course of the disease, very, very early stages of introduction uh, in most locations. So we continue to, to push forward with focus intensive targeted culling and sampling in known CWD areas. Again, the quick turnaround here of having um, the ability to detect the disease as early as possible is is the underpinning of this but then the reality that 50 percent of the cwd positive deer that we've detected have been during that winter operation and, and a few other folks have talked about that too the efficiency of staff uh, the dedication the the willingness to go ahead and shoot an entire social group to find a positive and then go back to that farm again and again and again to try to continue to remove those individuals from that social group is the amount of effort that hunters just aren't willing to exert. And in fact, in that CWD core area uh, in, in Macon County, now that deer densities are lower, we still have deer there. We probably have 10 or 15 deer per square mile, maybe 20. We were probably at 40 deer per square mile before we started the intensive culling. So effort there for hunters has dropped off significantly. And so that that postseason effort is, is tremendously important. And that's, you know, 20 additional deer that would have continued to be on the landscape for several more months, depositing prions and interacting with other deer and spreading the disease. And so if we look at what's our measures of success here, um, it in that Macon County core area, we've we've been reasonably successful at holding uh, prevalence rates in that two to four percent over that time. But the one thing we haven't been able to do is prevent spread. And so I'm sure Doug will talk about some of the stuff they're seeing in Illinois. Um, this map needs to be updated because we actually added another section to the to the northeast here. So we're slowly seeing that spread. So what else are we doing uh, to try to stop the disease inside the CWD management zone? We prohibited feeding and placement of minerals. We don't have baiting. We don't allow baiting. Um, all bait has to be removed 10 days prior to the hunting season. So that's not terribly controversial. The minerals have by far been uh, the most controversial part of it. Like, like Kip indicated, our hunters enjoy putting out a salt block and putting a camera over it and getting pictures. It's, it's really not the supplemental feeding part of it. We have increased antlers permits and then removed the antler point restriction. I'll talk about that a little more. We've also moved for the restriction 
we have a restriction on the importation of carcasses into the state. Um, we do not have restrictions on the transportation of carcasses within the state. It's been a topic of serious discussion and conversation, recognizing the risk. We have done a tremendous amount of messaging, including putting up billboards on our major highways. Um, lots of information is printed on the bottom of the permit when folks print it off on the internet. Um, so we've, we've tried to do that from an education standpoint. Well, we did remove the antler point restriction. Uh, the antler point restriction in Missouri protects a very large proportion of the yearling males. We know those yearling males disperse, particularly in North Missouri, they can disperse a long distance. Um, and so they represent an opportunity to introduce the disease to new locations. And, it, and as Kip alluded to, you know, the antler point restriction in North Missouri first went into place in 2004. So from 2004 to 2012, we had an antler point restriction. We expected that hunter attitudes and selectivity was probably shifting. And I was sitting in a meat processor in Macon County on opening morning and much to my surprise, yearling buck, yearling buck, yearling buck, yearling buck. And I'm like, wow. Uh, they like the antler point restriction a lot, but our hunters also like to kill deer. And so the opportunity to do that, I think they took it. And if you look at what the impact of it was on our harvest, maybe. Um, in our antler point restriction counties, particularly North Missouri, about 35% of our harvest has been antler bucks, 15% button bucks, and 51% does. In our non-antler point restriction um, counties, obviously a uh, much higher buck harvest and about a one-to-one -one buck to antler buck to doe harvest. And then our CWD management zone in 2012, you know, the first year after we repealed the antler point restriction looked exactly like a, a CWD uh, or a non-antler point restriction county. And so if we look at some of the impacts here on harvest uh, in non-APR counties, you can see the decline in harvest from 2004 through the present. Um, uh, a, a slight decline in, in two and a half year old harvest, but then three and a half year olds as they got recruited into the population, starting to make up more and more of our harvest. And then our four and a half year old bucks, we have such high harvest pressure on bucks anyway, we, we get very few recruited to four and a half. If we look at CWD counties, you can see there, 2012, we had a quick bump in one and a half year old harvest. It slowly kind of creeped down over time. Basically, it shifted all the harvest out of the two and a half year olds. Says so shoot two and a half year olds, you shot one and a half year olds. Um, and so then again, kind of a slow to stable increase in three and a half year olds and, and a very similar trend in, in four and a half year olds, although numerically they're, they're lower. But this also coincided with some overall population declines. So throughout much of North Missouri over the mid 2000s, uh, we were actively in an in a effort of trying to aggressively reduce a deer population. And so much of the trend that we see is probably more directly related to change in um, abundance as it is to change in um, the antler point restriction. But you can see there in about 2012, our numbers came together, but that pattern is one that's been reflected statewide. And so if we look at attitudes, the rating of the season, uh, in non-APR counties, um, generally declining overall satisfaction, increasing dissatisfaction, again, ref reflective of those changes in populations. So our CWD counties, again, in 2012, when we, we made those changes in those six counties, that dissatisfaction still looks the same. But if we fast forward to 2016 and say, okay, four years after we found the disease, what's it now look like? In those north CWD counties, you can see um, about 15% saying excellent, about 40% saying good. But when we compare those to APR counties, patterns the same. So removing the antler point restriction hasn't resulted in increased dissatisfaction. And part of that, I think, is because of the plan of, of our hunters when they go afield. So we asked this question, it's, it's certainly got more non-selective. So we ask on surveys, postseason hunter attitude surveys, what folks think about or what their plan is when they go hunting. Um, and for the most part, the non-selective group are those that just want to kill a deer. They don't care what it is. And so doe hunters, you can see most of this is reflected that change of population. As the population decline, their opportunity to be successful was probably driving their, their willingness to be selective. And overall, our pattern of selectivity amongst hunters has remained relatively unchanged. So again, I think that's a big driving pattern there. So why else remove the antler point restriction? Uh, a big part of it was because of the likelihood or the possibility of dispersal of young males across North Missouri to create new hotspots. And so 
In Lynn County in 2005, that's that original Macon County core area, about 12 miles or so, we had a, a yearling male harvested during the hunting season. After that, in a nine square mile area, we removed about 250 deer in 2015, uh, the winter of 2016, and then did some additional sampling this past fall and have identified no additional positives. So this was a CWD positive deer that would have been protected by the antler point restriction. We don't know how many times this has repeated itself across the landscape, but from a disease management standpoint, we felt as an agency it was irresponsible for us to put a regulation into place that protected a segment of the population that we knew was going to disperse and had the possibility of introducing the disease to new locations and contributing to the spread. From a population management standpoint, the antler point restriction wasn't doing a, a lot for us. So some other things going on at the same time, our commission uh, approved a moratorium on the issuance of, of breeder permits, um, which initiated uh, a legislative hearing uh, in which the, the captive servant industry attempted to get deer reclassified as livestock, resulted in four hearings across the state. Ultimately, this recommendation got rolled up into an omnibus bill that, that our uh, governor had to veto, which he didn't really like. It was a good spending bill, um, but ultimately vetoed it because of the definition of, of livestock. And so then 2014, our commission approved some changes in regulations to ban the importation of live white-tailed deer, um, add some additional very specific fencing requirements um, to our code, additional testing, um, and we were promptly sued by the captive servant industry. Uh, we lost the initial trial and it's currently in the Court of Appeals. So we'll see where that goes in terms of our authority to implement regulations. But ultimately, you know, our conclusions here are that early detection is absolutely critical um, in being able to implement an intensive targeted culling effort. Um, it does appear that we've been able to limit prevalence rate to some degree. Uh, but it's certainly spreading geographically and then those new positives um, that, that we don't know what the result of them are is certainly a, of great concern. It's, it's of concern in our ability to manage the disease moving forward. But then ultimately, as we've looked at some of these changes to regulations, whether it's feeding and baiting, whether it's the antler point restriction, it appears our hunter attitudes are much more closely tied to satisfaction with overall abundance of the deer population than they are those specific regulations. So, so for the most part, we've been able to stem that tide. But all of this takes a lot, a lot of time. And so here's a graph that basically shows the hours work. 2010, that's that time when we first found um, that captive facility. We spent four FTEs, about 7,000 hours working on CWD. Free ranging positive found in 2012, we spent the equivalent of 10 full-time employees. And you fast forward to 2016, this is when we started finding those sparks in Cole and, and Franklin County. Um, a tremendous amount of additional staff investment and then last year for mandatory sampling, we spent nearly 80,000 hours as an agency working on CWD, which is the equivalent of 40 full-time employees. Some of that's donated hours. We get comp time. We get a half hour back for every extra hour you work up to 80 hours. And so um, we don't have 40 plus staff that were solely dedicated to that, but they were spending a lot of time on it. And the result is, as has been mentioned before, the, the cost to conservation is tremendous. All the other things that staff aren't working on, you know, two, three, four months out of the year, just completely devoid of, of wildlife related activity. And so with that, in spite of, of what has happened, um, our, our Conservation Commission, our Department of Administration are still committed to, to remaining steadfast and following through an implementation of some reasonable um, management actions to try to limit the further spread of this disease as we recognize the significance of it. Um, or the potential significance of it um, to Missourians um, and, and to the wildlife resource. So, thanks.